From the outset, Walkley used the Lancet to challenge the elites controlling the medical profession. One of the first controversies he ignited concerned the standard of treatment in London hospitals, where treatment was dictated by medical practitioners who were influential members of the Capitals College of Physicians or the College of Surgeons. Now, not only did Walkley report in detail on badly performed surgical procedures, he named those who he believed to have been incompetent or disinterested in the welfare of their patients. And among the surgeons whom Walkley singled out for criticism was one Frederick Tyrrell, a surgeon at St Thomas's Hospital, who at first responded to Walkley's claims of patients' mistreatment by having him banned from the hospital. But this did not stop Walkley from publicly accusing Tyrrell of having plagiarised the lectures by Sir Astley Cooper that Walkley had published in The Lancet. Tyrrell sued, but while a jury found Walkley guilty, they assessed the damages he had to pay at a fraction of the sum that Tyrrell had demanded. Walkley continued to report on the mistreatment of patients, highlighting instances where incidents involved prominent members of the medical colleges, proving to be incompetent or neglectful. In 1828, for example, he reported in disturbing detail on the case of a man who had entered Guy's Hospital strong and healthy but suffering from a blockage of the urinary tract which had been caused by a bladder stone. Now, the procedure for cutting out such a stone, known as lithotomy, involved making a small incision in the peritoneum after a grooved wooden staff had been inserted via the urethra. The surgeon then felt for the stone. A dilator was passed into the bladder. Then forceps and the stone were pulled out. Now all of this was done without anaesthetic, and hence the aim of the surgeon was to perform the operation as quickly as possible because it was indeed some, so painful. And it was said that some surgeons could complete the procedure in a minute. However, the operation could easily kill the patient by the accidental severing of the pudental artery or by causing a deadly infection. In this case, the patient was operated on by one Bransby Cooper, a surgeon who was clearly incapable of successfully performing the operation. Walkley reported that the operation had lasted a full hour, during which time it became clear that Cooper had little idea what he was doing and had panicked. As for the patient, he cried out in pain, imploring Cooper to stop. And afterwards, he was, and I quote the Lancet, put to bed much exhausted and was bled using leeches in the belief that this would ease the swelling which had appeared in his abdomen. The patient was again bled the following day, but died in the evening, some 29 hours after the operation, in all likelihood of peritonitis. It seemed clear to Walkley that Cooper was so incompetent that he should never have been appointed as a surgeon to Guy's Hospital. That he had, Walkley could only surmise, was because he was the nephew of Sir Astley Cooper, a fellow and counsellor of the Royal College of Surgeons. Well, once Walkley claimed this, the younger Cooper sued him for libel. This time, Walkley defended himself, and he used the trial to call for more accountable standards in hospitals and an end to the nepotism he saw resulting from power that the medical colleges had over the regulation of the profession. And as in the case that was brought against Walkley by Frederick Tyrrell, the jury found Walkley guilty. They had no other alternative. Under English libel law, they had no option but to find him guilty. Truth, in effect, was no defence. The truth of what Walkley had said was no defence at all, because uh, ultimately the test of a libel was whether one had been held up to contempt and ridicule by one's peers. And quite clearly, this is what Walkley had done. But the jury awarded light damages, and Walkley was able to pay his legal costs with donations which were received 
from fellow medical practitioners who likewise wanted to see reforms within the medical profession. Well, under Walkley's editorship, The Lancet drew attention to a range of medical and wider social matters that Walkley and those of many of his readers regarded as being in dire need of reform. And one was the medical treatment of men, women and children who were unfortunate enough to become subject to the new poor law that was enacted in 1834. The Poor Law of 1834 was a response to the changes in the agricultural economy and the growth of manufacturing in England, which was causing a growing number of people to be unable to find agricultural work, either in the communities of their birth or in towns to which they come seeking work in manufacturing. 